How do you think um, implementing cross-chain is going to change uh, the way um, uh, tokenization is perceived? Yeah, so cross-chain, I think, is one of the key building blocks of how the real-world asset trend and tokenization in general will develop. You have two worlds where it's developing simultaneously. You have the public blockchain world, where people are generating many cutting-edge real-world assets, but where the amount of value flowing through tokenization is much, much smaller than the other world of capital markets, banks, and traditional asset managers. So in the Web3 world, the problem is how do you connect in a secure way that makes sure that the asset moved over the bridge doesn't get stolen, and if the asset moved over the bridge has a high likelihood of being stolen, which is what I think people are gonna realize more and more when they look at the actual security designs of bridges other than Chainlink and CCIP, then those assets will begin to carry a risk premium. They will begin to be viewed as worse assets because they are exposed to the risk of various bridge technologies which are in many ways fundamentally insecure. So the problem in Web3 is generating enough security to allow enough value to move across various public chains in ways that raise the overall purchasing power, liquidity, TVL, and basically usability and value of, of tokenization across all these different chains, right? So it's, it's largely a security problem. The capital markets is a place where you have a lot of fragmentation. Every um, bank is generating its own, its own chain. Every asset manager is generating its own chain. And this technical fragmentation is leading to fragmentation of liquidity. In fragmented liquidity, um, you really have a very serious problem where even if you make a successful real world asset or token on one of those bank chains, and you're not connected to all the chains that have the liquidity, you're not gonna get the purchasing power, you're not gonna get the success that you're looking for. So the first problem is, how do you securely connect Web3, which is what CCIP was launched to address, how do you securely move value across different chains in Web3? Now, there's a lot of people migrating to CCIP basically because they evaluated the security and can very clearly see that the security is superior and they value the security of their underlying assets, so they kind of really care about that. In capital markets, uh, CCIP is being adopted by more and more banks, asset managers, uh, market infrastructures, financial market infrastructures, and, and so on, to connect all those different chains and therefore package all of that liquidity into a single network that can move it across all the different chains. Now the third problem is how do you merge these two worlds of the connected Web3 world and the connected capital markets world into a single internet of contracts where the capital markets value can interact with a DeFi Web3 tokenized value. That is really more a problem of compliance and how does a cross-chain connection allow compliance to happen initially across the bank chains and eventually across the bank chains and the public chains. But that is uh, really where all of this is going. It's going to a single global internet of contracts where all of the public chains and all of the private chains are interconnected with each other. And if a high quality asset appears on any one of them, they can all interact with it in a compliant, high speed, secure way. So that's the body of, of work we're, we're creating with Chainlink and CCIP.